Open the Interior One sample file, which contains a living room scene. I'll be using it to discuss the Scanline Renderer, which is the default renderer in 3ds Max and Viz. The chief advantage of using the Scanline is its speed. However, the Scanline Renderer has lots of limitations and quirks. I'd like to give you some tips and tricks for creating professional quality with the scan line. To start with, go ahead and make a test render. If you see this ray trace messages appear, go up to the render scene dialog under the ray tracer tab and uncheck show messages. In the beginning, this scene is very dark. It's illuminated solely by this table lamp. You might think that the reason that it's dark is because the lampshade is completely black here. Maybe it's obscuring the light. Let's test that theory out. Open the material editor and sample the material from the table lamp. That object has a multi subobject material assigned, and within that you'll see the lampshade is a submaterial. So go in there, and you'll see that this material is of the standard type, and it's using a bitmap to give the lampshade some texture. Try increasing self illumination to 50%, and do another test render. The difference here is that the lampshade is brighter, but it didn't let any additional light through the lampshade to illuminate the interior. Maybe if you decrease the opacity, the light will illuminate the rest of the room. Let's try that out next. I'll set opacity to 80%, and you can see some light coming through the sample slot. I'll do another test render, and that's a little better because we're able to see some of that geometry that I modeled for the light bulb and for these wires that hold the lampshade up. But still, we're not getting additional illumination into the room. And this is one of the chief limitations of the scanline renderer. We will have to add additional light sources in order to illuminate this room adequately. And these additional light sources are not really there in the real world. A quick way of getting even illumination is by using the default lights. I'll press F3 to go into shaded mode and you'll see that the scene is very dark. The default lights were turned off when the light inside this lamp was added. Right click on the viewport label and choose configure. On the rendering method tab check default lighting and select two lights. When you do that the user lighting is turned off in the viewport and at least we're able to see everything clearly now for working. But we really don't have any idea how the scene is being lit right now if we're just looking at the viewport. Go up to the views menu and add the default lights to the scene. Use both the key and fill lights and set the distance scaling to a small value like 0.1 so that the lights will be close to this little room model. I'll click OK and then go into the front viewport and zoom out and you'll see the two lights that were added. They're identical lights. They're not clones, however. They are unique and they have a multiplier of one with a pure white color. Select them both and center them more or less on the room. Go into the left viewport, zoom out, and center them in this dimension as well. 
This will guarantee that you get even illumination. Look through the camera again and I've toggled shaded mode on. Now everything is much brighter now because we're actually looking at the lighting information as a preview in the viewport. Make a test render and you'll see that everything is much brighter now. Now if this room is really lit solely by this table lamp then this is too much. We need to turn down the key and fill lights. An easy way to do that is to use the light lister. Set the multipliers to 0.5 and render again. Now maybe it's too dark. Press 8 to open the environment and effects dialog box. Let's say that this is a nighttime scene illuminated by the table lamp. Right now we have a jet black color appearing outside of the window. Change that color to dark blue. Now you can see that color appear out of the window. Alternatively you could use a gradient map here if you wanted that color to vary. Click the ambient color swatch and right now it's set to pure black. Add a little white to that but not too much because this will illuminate all the, surface, all the surfaces equally within the scene. When I render again it should be a little bit brighter. Notice that I didn't change the multipliers of any of the lights to brighten the scene in this way. Now if this room really is being lit by this table lamp, I would expect it to have more of a warm ambiance. You can simulate that by tinting the global light. Click on this color swatch and give it a very pale yellow color. This will warm up the room. It's like adding a photo filter in Photoshop. At this point there are no shadows being cast in this room so it doesn't look very realistic. Let's start by making the table lamp cast shadows. Select it and you'll see that it's a luminaire. You don't have access to any shadow parameters with a luminaire. You need to open the luminaire and that is done on the group menu under assembly open. Notice that it now has a red bounding box to indicate that it's an open assembly. I'll select the light source by name and I can see that it's indented within the table lamp assembly right here. It's a free point source which is a photometric luminaire. I'll turn on shadow casting and use a shadow map. And then I'll close the assembly. Render again and now you can see shadows are being cast by the lampshade. There's a cone of illumination down here and another one up here where the light is coming through this opening on the top of the table lamp. Now watch what happens if we try to make the Omni lights cast shadows. It's probably something that you're not expecting. I'll go to the light lister and turn on shadow casting for the Omnis and to save time I'll use shadow maps which are calculated very quickly. Render again and everything is very dark. Not only that but you see shadow leaks appear upon the edges of the ceiling and at the floor. This is happening because the light is being blocked by the ceiling and the floor. And shadows are being cast after the light hits those surfaces. I'll go into perspective mode and arc rotate around here 
and you can see that I'm able to see through the ceiling into the interior. So the ceiling is actually paper thin here and I recommend making your ceiling like that. I'll select the ceiling object to show it to you. It's a mesh. I'll go to the display tab and show you that I have back face cull on. If that is off then you can't see through it. I recommend checking that so that you can have the ceiling and see through it while you're modeling but you also have to make sure that the material that is assigned to that is single-sided. Now let me just orbit upside down here and sample the ceiling material and you can see that it's two-sided. Now I did that just to prove this point. Two-sided materials act as if they were solid objects. By creating a paper thin ceiling and floor and making sure that they are single sided, we can actually get these omni lights to cast shadows in the room. I'll do another test render. And now you can see that shadows are indeed being cast by the omni lights, but they are very unusual. And this is occurring because of the placement of those omni lights outside the room. So I recommend not to cast shadows with these non-physical lights. Even if you go to great lengths to make them cast shadows, they still won't look good because they don't represent actual light sources that are really there in the model. You'll get better results by leaving them out. The last thing that I can improve here is the lampshade itself. Right now we're to believe that the light is coming from this source in here and illuminating the whole room. But the lampshade is not very bright. You saw what happened when we increased self-illumination. It sort of flattened out the whole lamp and it didn't look very believable. You can make the lamp glow by using an effect. And I'll do that next. I'll go into the material editor and select the lampshade material and flag that using a material ID number in this channel. I'll use number one by selecting it in that drop down. Then I'll go back to the environment and effects dialog by pressing eight. And I'll go to the effects tab and add lens effects and then I'll use the glow effect and move it into the active side over here. Then I'll scroll down and go to the options tab within the glow element rollout. And I'll use the material ID number one as the image source. Go back to parameters and set the size down to the minimum value which is 0.1. Click Interactive, and you'll be able to make changes in real time. So we're seeing the glow, but it's too bright. Turn down the intensity until the point where you start to see some of that geometry on the inside of the lamp, but that the lampshade still looks pretty bright. Somewhere around 50% or so looks pretty good. So there you have it, tips and techniques for using the scanline renderer.